Good afternoon, I'm Dan DeRose with 19 News Now, coming to you from our digital studio as we are getting ready to take you to a sentencing that's happening in downtown Cleveland. This is for a Chagrin Falls clerk. You're going to see her live right there. That is Debbie Bosworth. Uh, she is the Chagrin Falls clerk that from January of 2000 to November of 2019, almost a 10 year span, she uh, pleaded no contest, but the court found her guilty of uh, several counts of theft in office, tampering with records and money laundering. This is a case where she was a clerk in the Chagrin Falls, the Village Building and Utilities Department had this whole scheme working for almost 10 years in which uh, she was found guilty of embezzling uh, more than $238,000. Now she's going to be ordered to pay restitution in the amount of $313,000. We'll uh, anticipate hearing here in court uh, what the actual theft was. Was it the $238,000 or is it the restitution? Uh, the restitution may involve court cases, uh, lawyers' fees for the uh, village itself, but here is uh, what the scam was. Uh, she worked in the village uh, utilities and uh, building department. Her role was responsible for taking payments. She was processing payments for contractor registrations, building department permits, making deposits and managing additional departmental accounts and tasks. It wasn't until the village noticed uh, that there were some discrepancies between bank accounts and the paperwork that was being filed, it appears that she was, uh, the investigation revealed that Bosworth stole cash from the water department and replaced the missing cash with checks that were to be deposited in the building department's bank account. Uh, she then submitted falsified reports to the finance to the finance department, then hiding that theft. Let's take you now live into court here in Cleveland. Attorney, Mr. James Gutierrez and Edward Bridal. We're here today for purposes of sentencing. The record should reflect that Ms. Bosworth did plead guilty on June 23rd, 2020, or actually no contest, right? Mm -hmm. To every, all the counts in the indictment. Um, sorry, pled no contest, was found guilty by the court to um, all uh, 21 counts in the indictment. Each of the counts are felonies of the third degree there is no presumption of prison and no presumption of probation. The law is neutral as to the sentence to be imposed. Um, I did order a pre-sentence report at the time of the plea. I did review that report this morning. Um, I also, as part of that report, provided to the court, but not as per law, not provided to defense counsel, was a letter uh, written by the mayor of the village of Chagrin Falls, Mayor William Tomko, T-O-M-K-O. That letter is, is dated July 20th, 2020, um, 2020, 2021. There is a sentencing memorandum from the state of Ohio that was authored by uh, Mr. Bridal and a sentencing memorandum. Did you file a sentencing? Okay, maybe that, that was the sentencing. I'm sorry, that was the sentencing memorandum because I now have two copies of it. Yeah, okay, so I have those. Um, I also have a receipt. That was something that I required. Um, and Mr. Bridal and Mr. Freeman, you guys are gonna speak to the issue of restitution, um, making sure that all of the restitution, in fact, has been paid in full. Um, I'm sure you'll speak to that. Uh, Mr. Bridal, did you receive a copy of the pre-sentence report? Did you read it and did you find it to be accurate? Yes, Your Honor, I did receive it, I read it, and found it to be accurate. Okay, Mr. Friedman? As well, Your Honor. All right, okay, I'm prepared to go forward with sentencing. On behalf of the state, Mr. Bridal? Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, start with just one um, issue of allied offenses, and that's gonna be uh, counts one and two. Your Honor, counts one and two are just the same count fled in the alternative. So they are going to be allied. <clears throat> the state then would elect to have sentencing, or this court to sentence her on count two, which is again, theft in office, a felony of the second degree. Count one by operation, which is merged into count two. Yes, 
Dixon's doing a great shot. Right. Um, can you remind me if uh, Dixon was Thank you, Judge. Judge, I'd just like to uh, start off by introducing some of the facts in this case. I know that you have um, read the pre-sentence investigation, which contains a lot of those, but I'd like to just summarize them now. Judge, Ms. Bosworth, the defendant, was hired in 1997 uh, by the village of Chagrin Falls. By 2000, she was working as a clerk there in the village. It's a very small place, um, just a few employees. And she had a dual role. She, one, was the clerk of the utilities department. She was also the clerk of the building department. And in her role for the utilities department, she took in, she processed all of the incoming water payments. So water and sewer are billed out by the city, actually by Ms. Bosworth at that point and um, the residents pay for their water service by sending a check or cash back to Village Hall. And they can do that one of three ways. They can mail it in, those payments, they can drop it in a drop box there at Village Hall, or they can come in person, they speak to Ms. Bosworth, and they would pay uh, their utility bill in either cash or check. She then would go on her computer, she would process those payments, make the according adjustments, and then she would also deposit those monies. So the cash, the checks were put down in a deposit slip with the bank, and she would either drive or just walk down the street and make the deposits on a very regular basis for those utility department payments. In her role as the building clerk, <clears throat> She also took in payments. These payments were contractor registration fees and uh, building permit fees, and they were mostly by check. So a contractor would sign a check for his fees and submit them the same way to Mrs. Bosworth. And instead of her taking those checks to a bank and depositing them, she had to forward those checks to the finance department, the village finance department which is in the same building. So she would take all of the checks that she received for the month and she would create, let's say, an internal document that, that's like a cover sheet, a payance sheet. And she would put down all of the checks that she took in for the month. She would reference a permit number for all of those checks and she would give them to the finance director or, or assist it with the finance director. So. The problem was that the finance department's accounting software did not link with the building department's software. So what Ms. Bosworth was able to do, or what she quickly realized, is that she could hold back a few of those contractor checks for herself, put them on this side of the desk, and take the rest of the staff, do that cover letter, and send them to the finance department. No one would know any better that she took a couple of these checks. And why that's important, Your Honor, is because with those checks, she began the scheme of theft. When residents would come and pay their water bills in cash, she would take some of that cash, put it in her pocket or her purse or wherever she put it, and then she would take those checks that she took from the building department deposits, and she would deposit them in the water department bank account. So this is how she perpetuated her scheme over two decades. Two decades of theft Ms. Bosworth is accused of. In 2018, Your Honor, she was promoted uh, by the village to a new position and she taught the new clerk how to perform her job. And you know the new clerk performed that job well for over a year before um, the, the clerk went on vacation for a, a week. So during that period of time, Ms. Bosworth 
either volunteered or was asked to cover those old duties that she did. Taking in water payments, uh, utility payments, taking in those building de department checks, and running to the bank. So she did that for a week. And when the new clerk came back, she immediately saw some red flags. Specifically, she saw that two residents who always paid in cash um, made payments while she was gone. And those payments equaled $700. Yet the clerk looked at the bank deposit and determined that $700 in cash was not deposited into the bank account. Only $115 was deposited. So the new clerk asked the bank for some records related to that deposit. And what she discovered was that the $585 that was missing were actually three contractor checks deposited into that water department bank account. So this, again, was a huge red flag for for that new clerk. And she looked at the building department deposits and saw that the amount that was taken in in the building department, at least on the software program, was $9,975. Yet, the deposit made to the finance department by Ms. Bosworth in 2019 was $585 short. And that's just a very perfect example of how, in fact, she was stealing for those two decades. She went out of that post and she came back and she couldn't help herself but to do it again. After these facts were, on, on, um, were discovered, on Friday, on Friday um, December 6th, she was confronted by the mayor and the finance director and she was put on leave. That next week, she resigned from her position. Then came the grueling investigation that the detectives here in the back of the courtroom, I'm sorry, that Chief Dasik and her assistants and people from the village had to undertake. And this involved pulling old dusty boxes out, going through those records, trying to determine what happened, trying to unwind the mess that she created. And eventually, it was determined that they alone could not do this work. They had to hire a forensic accounting firm to do it or to assist them. And so that firm was hired. And after several months, was finally able to come out with a bottom line number. And that number was 238000 $954.44. That is how much the Forensic Accounting Review found the, city, the village was out and that the defendant has embezzled. Your Honor, restitution in this case, when you add in the Forensic Accounting fee and subtract out around $8,000 that the village owed the defendant, from vacation pay and whatnot, separation pay, the total restitution was $313,856.34. You ordered that amount at the plea. What was the amount for the um, forensic accounting firm? $82,908.37. And that's part of the full restitution? That is part of the full restitution. Thank you. So, so yeah, so total restitution was that $313,856.34. The state, at the time of the plea, asked this court to um, tell OPERS, the Ohio um, Public Employees Retirement System, to have her forfeit her pension. And the defense agreed to that, did not object to that. And a check in the amount of $213,000, 213, 328, 
in nine cents. That check was sent from Obers to this court and has been paid towards restitution. Also, defense counsel has provided the state with a uh, deposit that was made with the probation department today of $100,528.25. Therefore, restitution has been paid in full. Judge Mayor Tomko has provided a statement, a victim impact statement. Do, is there any questions about restitution? No, I read the, I read the statement as well, just okay. so you know. Okay. Judge, and I'll read it out loud for the court because it is an impact statement on behalf of the village, but it also directs uh, attention to, to the defendant. And it says, I am Mayor Tomko, and I am representing the victims of your crime today, the residents of Chagrin Falls, and your former co-workers in the village. I would first like to thank the court for the opportunity to submit a statement to the court. Debbie, you have replaced the money you stole from the residents, so there is no monetary loss now. But in a larger sense, you can never replace or make the tremendous loss of trust your actions caused and the enduring sense of betrayal we all felt. Village Hall is a small group working closely together, almost like family. We trusted you completely. That trust was misplaced and betrayed. We all know firsthand what it means to be a victim now. While we were like family, you also betrayed your actual family. Your father was a police officer, your daughter is a police officer, and your husband is a county deputy sheriff. They too are victims of your actions as it relates on them. And what did your actions gain for you? To make restitution, you are forfeiting most of your worldly assets. You lost your good name, something precious that can only be recovered in extremely rare circumstances, and only if you make superhuman efforts to accomplish good for the rest of your life. Now, instead of a comfortable retirement and respectful working lifetime of public service to remember, that is all gone. I can only hope that you take the time to reflect on your actions and make whatever recompense you can for the non-monetary non cost of your actions, as the non-monetary cost also weighs heavily on your victims too. Thank you, Your Honor, for this opportunity to address the court today. Signed, Mayor William Tonko. Judge, the, the state is asking for a prison sentence in this case. We feel the, that is the only appropriate sentence for a public official that steals a quarter of a million dollars. Regardless of whether she's paid it back or not. Judge, looking and analyzing the sentencing factors, Revised Code 29.29.12b lists several factors indicating the offender's conduct is more serious. These factors include, as applicable, one, the victim of the offense suffered serious physical, psychological, or economic harm as a result of the offense. Two, the offender held public office or position of trust in the community, and the offense related to that office or position. Three, the offender's professional reputation or occupation, elected office, or profession was used to facilitate the offense or is likely to influence future conduct of others. And the fourth that applies, the offender's relationship with the victim facilitated the offense. In 2929.12c are listed several factors indicating the conduct is less serious. One, the victim induced or facilitated the offense. Two, in committing the offense, the offender acted under strong provocation. Three, in committing the offense, the offender did not cause or expect to cause physical harm to any person or property. Four, there are substantial grounds to mitigate the offender's conduct, although the grounds are not enough to constitute a defense. The state submits, Judge, that none of these factors apply to reduce the seriousness of this offense. 
And finally, in uh, 29.29.12, D and E are listed several recidivism factors the court should consider uh, related to whether the offender is likely or not likely to commit future crimes. And there are a few related to this case as well. Prior to committing an offense, whether the defendant had a criminal record or otherwise led in law, a law-abiding life for several years. Whether the offense was committed under circumstances not likely to reoccur. And prior to committing an offense, whether the offender has genuine remorse for the offense. Now, it is true that the defendant does not have a criminal history judge, that she did leave a, live a law-abiding life before her offense. Related to remorse, I'll let the court determine uh, today whether she feels that remorse. But I would like to point you to uh, the PSI, the pre-sentence investigation. And I'll read right from it. And it says, she, the defendant, stated there were different reasons for her actions. She stated perhaps to put food on the table or to purchase groceries. She claims perhaps to replenish a candy dish in her office or to pay a resident's water bill. She mentioned she never spent the money on shopping as she lived paycheck to paycheck. Judge, in the last 10 years, I'm just going to list for you the amount of money taken per year. In 2011, $21,000. And these are approximate, approximate figures. It's around $21,000. In 12, $20,000. 13, $27,000. 14, $25,000. 2015, $21,000. 2016, 30,000. 2017, 25,000. 2018, 27,000. 2019, $33,000. Your Honor, if, if the grocery bill is $12,000 a year and replenishing a candy dish is a couple hundred dollars a year, then I would ask this court to inquire from the defendant what she was doing with the eight to $18,000 of additional money she was spending. I hope that that's not a minimization of her actions that she stated to uh, the probation investigator. Judge, on balance, looking at these factors, the state believes that she does deserve a prison sentence. There are not many excuses I do not believe that you'll, I, I, don't, I hope you won't hear any more excuses. I will say uh, that paying back the money you stole, losing your pension, and bringing shame upon yourself and your family, those are all just natural consequences to the crimes she has committed. Judge, none of those things are actual punishments for her crime. And that is what the state is asking today, is for you to send her to prison to punish her for these crimes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Judge, I believe that my statement here today will be rather reflective of kind of the whole process once uh, these facts were discovered. And by that I mean this. Uh, when Debbie reached out to me uh, the day that she was approached by village officials, uh, I put a call to Law Director Dale Markowitz that very day uh, and made clear that uh, we would uh, help to uh, rectify this situation. And there has never been any sort of uh, fight or debate as to the amount of money uh, we had offered uh, up front uh, to pay for all of the, not just loss, uh, but the cost of investigation, including uh, the uh, forensic accounting. And that was done even before the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office had been involved. I hear what Mr. Bryan was saying as to his reading of whether or not uh, Debbie accepts responsibility. She'll make a statement here today 
that her actions uh, are clear that she does accept responsibility. Uh, she never even once read through the uh, forensic accounting to say, yeah, I did this, but I didn't do that. Even if all of it fit her, most clients want to read it and make sure. She has always said, it is what it is. Um, but, I, but I would just like to go to the paragraph that Mr. Bridal was uh, referring to a moment ago, uh, where he stated that perhaps uh, the reasons uh, were to put table, uh, food on the table or purchase groceries. The sentence before that, just to be very clear, is that the defendant, Debbie Bosworth, indicated she totally accepts responsibility for her actions and is sorry for the events that took place. She stated that there were different reasons for her actions. This was not an exhaustive list at all. Uh, she would also tell you that uh, she put the bulk of this money uh, towards the education uh, of her daughters and so forth. And that's really where this went. So I don't think that there's any minimization to say that this amount of money focused on a uh, candy dish or just mere groceries. There is no, uh, there's reason, but there's not excuse. And so this was not uh, any sort of uh, exhaustive list. As Mr. Bridal uh, stated here today, uh, the full amount uh, has been paid back. Interestingly, I think that the mayor's uh, victim impact statement pretty much captured uh, kind of the reality of the situation. And, and almost, I can convey what he, or kind of adopt what he said to you, because she now does no longer have uh, uh, any finances uh, to retire on. She no longer has her good name, as the mayor said. She no longer has the respect of those around her. Um, and she has lost the trust of many, including her family. And he did obviously uh, cite the fact that uh, many of those in her family are law enforcement. And so this is a major issue uh, within, uh, within the family. Debbie would like to uh, simply give uh, a statement uh, to you. Uh, I believe that uh, Mr. Bridal's uh, viewpoint of 2929 B and C, D and E is a fair interpretation, but I would also uh, agree with him that uh, the, your assessment of her uh, taking responsibility in this is important. She did that here in the PSR, but she also does want to talk today. Um, and she's got to get on with her life at, at her age now uh, with absolutely no savings. And this did not only wipe out her, but helped to wipe out uh, her husband uh, as well. Uh, in a subsequent marriage. So this was something that's been uh, very problematic. I will tell you that from my standpoint, uh, Debbie has been very involved in the case. As I said, there were certain things she didn't want to do. She just kind of said, it is what it is. And it should also be noted that the Markham bill, which was the forensic accounting, was $20,000 higher uh, than what it is now. And that's because uh, the village noted that um, that it was a very uh, expensive, perhaps overly expensive for what was done. But even with what it was, Debbie didn't even take issue uh, with that. I mean, she wasn't happy about the bill, but was willing to pay that back as well. I met with her and her husband many times. My home, uh, their home, uh, kind of talk about everything going on. And, and clearly, she's here today having the uh, face her lowest moment in one's life uh, before uh, many cameras. And that's uh, a place that most people uh, would not want to uh, admit their greatest wrongdoing. Uh, and so there has certainly been a price to pay. Uh, she knows that if this honorable court were to consider uh, a term of community control sanction, uh, that if she were to stray even the slightest, uh, that there is a major penalty to pay. I don't expect uh, uh, that to be the case uh, here, but that is kind of a hammer above her that she's going to also have to walk with as a, an additional consequence. So if it would please the court, uh, I would ask that Ms. Bosworth uh, be able to make a statement on her behalf. Thank you. Thank you.
you for giving me the opportunity. Oh, and I apologize. She asked if if she could read something written just because she was nervous about the whole thing. Yeah, so you can read it. You uh, need to read slowly, though. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to apologize today to my former employer, the citizens of Chagrin Falls, and my family. While this period has been exceptionally difficult, it has been only because of my actions. While I have reasons for what I did, there is no excuse. I'm embarrassed. And I know that the only thing that I could do now is make the situation better, is to make sure that the village has been paid back and that I have fully accepted my wrongdoing here. As the court knows, I have been able to pay back the, the village and I want everyone to know that I accept all fault and I have learned a great lesson from being in this case. I'm very sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Does the court have any questions for me? If not, we, I do we not. thank you. Um, okay, so again, the record should be clear that these are felonies of the third degree. The law states that there is no presumption for prison and there is no presumption for probation. The law is neutral on a felony of the third degree. Again, also the record should reflect that the defendant did take um, responsibility for each and every count by entering into pleas of no contest and did not enter into a plea negotiation with the state of Ohio. She did forfeit her pension and paid back uh, the village of Chagrin Falls uh, for the money stolen as well as for the forensic accounting firm. Um, I do want to state for the record that I, it was unbeknownst to me until I read the letter from the mayor of um, Chagrin Falls. I was unaware that she, her husband was engaged as a county uh, deputy sheriff. I am not aware of who he is. I do not have a relationship with him and was not made aware of that as part of the um, discussions I had with both the state of Ohio or Mr. Friedman. So that was my first um, reading of that. Um, and in no way does that impact the sentence that I am going to impose uh, with regard to uh, Mrs. Bosworth. Your Honor, yeah. May I ask a uh, Her husband is not a deputy sheriff in Cuyahoga County. Okay. Uh, he is a uh, deputy sheriff in Geauga County. And I will just say, I asked him long ago if he had any dealings with the other before. He never has. All right. So I just want to be clear, he's not, and nor has he ever been in this county. All right, good. And I, again, want to just restate that I am not aware of him. I've never had a relationship with him um, as, a as a professional or in my personal life. I don't know who he is, nor do I know her daughter. Um, so those are not part of the consideration I've given to the sentence that will be imposed in this, ca in this case. Um, I think it's important to realize that the mayor, in his uh, letter to the court um, and to the defendant in this matter, first of all acknowledges that there is no monetary loss um, to, the, to the village of Chagrin Falls, nor does he request a prison, statement, a prison uh, sentence from this court. Um, in taking all of the facts into consideration, as well as to the degree of felonies that um, the defendant did plead no contest to, um, I do find that she will be a good candidate for probation. Uh, that is in light of the fact that she reimbursed uh, this, the village of Chagrin Falls for the entire monetary loss, as well as the fact that uh, the, um, the city, through the mayor, is not requesting a prison, a prison sentence as well. She will be placed on two years of probation. It will be traditional probation, though that is not the recommendation from the probation department. They recommended that she be placed on the lowest level of probation. I do not agree with that, um, as her crimes would mandate, in my opinion, a higher level of supervision. Um, she will be placed on uh, two years of supervision, traditional uh, supervision, reporting monthly uh, to the probation department. She will, be able, she will be required to pay all fines, fees, and costs to the court.
Any violation of probation, no matter what it is, will result in a prison sentence. It could be something as small as not paying the court costs and she will serve a prison sentence. She is facing 36 months on 20 counts. So 36 months on each count, but uh, based on the statement of the prosecutor this, this morning or this afternoon, counts one and two would merge. So, I'm trying to think of how many total months that would be. Seven hundred and twenty months of prison time. If you do serve a prison sentence at any point in time, the law says that you may be placed on post release control for a period of three years. If you violate that supervision, you could go back to prison for up to one half of the sentence that was imposed at the time you were sentenced to prison. You could be charged with a felony called escape. They could make your supervision harder for you or longer. Do you understand? All right, so you'll go down today and um, speak with the probation department. Um, I think that's it. Anything else on behalf of the state? Mr. Bridal? All right, on behalf of your client, Mr. Friedman? No, no, I, I just would ask the record, but I apologize. I didn't introduce my co-counsel, Tiana Bohannon, who's in the back and was working on uh, Ms. Bosworth's behalf as well. And thank you very much, Your Honor, for your accommodation today as to schedule. Oh. Okay, um, so the hearing's concluded. If you want to wait a couple minutes, I'll get you the paperwork. Dan DeRose with 19 News Now. You've been watching the sentencing of a Chagrin Falls, former Chagrin Falls clerk uh, who had a pretty elaborate scheme in which she uh, ended up uh, fleecing three, $238,954.44 uh, over the span of what's uh, being said uh, two decades, uh, this scam of when people would come in, contractors would come in to buy permits, work permits, uh, people coming in to pay cash for utilities. Uh, she would take the cash herself. Uh, she was able to manipulate the computer system uh, so that the money didn't immediately show up missing. Uh, she gets two years probation, partially because the judge said, as the mayor pointed out, all of the money has been paid back. How did she do that? Uh, she paid it by, back by cashing in her pension. That money has gone straight to the city, plus another $100,000 that she had to come up with. All total, 313,856. That's because she also had to pay back the forensic accounting firm that had to be brought in to go over two decades worth of uh, bills and receipts and paperwork to find out exactly how much money. You heard her attorney say she never once went through that list to say, well, I didn't do this one or I didn't take this amount. She just concluded uh, that it is what it is, as it was said several times in court. Uh, as far as how much money uh, she allegedly took, and it, it, it was around $238,000, but having to pay restitution for a total of $313,000. And as you heard, her family has a, a lengthy uh, law enforcement uh, background, uh, and as the mayor said, she has tarnished her name, uh, that of not only herself, but her family, and that is part of the punishment in this case. Two years probation. Uh, she could face several, several months if she violates that probation, as you heard the judge state. For those of you who are watching nationally, we're going to turn you back over to LNL. For those of you here in Northeast Ohio, we have news coming up at 3 o'clock. I'm Dan DeRose with 19 News Now. Have a good afternoon. 19 News. First. Fair. Everywhere.